You're live. Okay, just start whenever. Hi, I'm Natalie Sather and I'm here at Casey Kane Racing with uh, their newest driver, Darren Pittman, driver of the number nine Great Clips. I'm gonna ask you a couple questions today, Darren. Um, the 2013 season's ready to kick off and this is your first time with a new teammate. How do you feel about working with Cody Dara this year? Oh, good, just uh, excited to be involved with, obviously, you know, such a big and, and good organization that we're able to even have a teammate. First off, just happy to be part of it myself mm -hmm. and uh, uh, working with Cody, you know, uh, just uh, really excited about it and I uh, got to work with him a little bit last mm -hmm. year for a couple races and I've always got along with him really well, don't know him uh, a whole lot, but uh, really looking forward to getting to know him better and, and uh, just seeing what we can, you know, pull together information-wise and certain things that I know that uh, he's quite a bit better than me at and, and <laughs> obviously things that, uh, you know, obviously I'd like to try to help him with too. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, I think it'll be a good relationship. We've got uh, uh, obviously a lot older myself, and and have been to a lot of the tracks more, and, and maybe have a little more experience. But uh, uh, you know, obviously, he brings a pretty fresh mm -hmm. uh, approach to uh, his driving style and certain things that uh, obviously could help me too. So I think we've got a good uh, spectrum from from a little bit of uh, young uh, to uh, a little older myself. Mm -hmm. That uh, hopefully uh, will be a good combination of KKR in general. Like being more experienced, like you said. Oh, sorry. No, sorry. Um, well, Hi, I'm Natalie Sather and I'm here at Casey Kane Racing with our newest driver, Darren Pittman, the driver of the number nine Great Clips Sage Fruit 410 Sprint Car. So the 2013 season's ready to kick off and you have a new teammate this year. This is your first time correct with a teammate. How do you feel about working with Cody Dara this year? I'm excited about it. It's just uh, neat to be involved with such a good organization that we, you know, obviously have a teammate to, uh, with Cody and then obviously Brad part-time too. So uh, it's neat to be able to bounce, you know, ideas off of somebody else that uh, uh, when you do get lost out there with a lot of races and that it's, uh, it's nice to go and, and hear somebody else's opinion and know that uh, uh, their goals are the same as yours that, uh, you know, they're uh, really are trying to help you. So uh, hopefully we can help him out and uh, there's some things that he does really good that, uh, you know, I'm interested in, in learning some things and uh, uh, been around a little longer too. So uh, definitely I think we've got a good balance between, uh, you know, experience and myself and, and uh, young and, and uh, fresh as far as uh, Cody's side of it. So I think uh, between the two of us we make a good team and uh, hopefully uh, get you looking forward to getting knowing better and uh, see uh, you know how, how much success we can find together you know here at KKR. Mm -hmm, definitely. Now, not having been on the road with World of Us since 2008, but having more experience than Cody does being on the road, how do you think you can maybe be a role model for him this year? Well, I mean, I'm just used to the traveling. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I like the traveling. I like going to different places, and that's something I haven't done for the last couple of years. And um, I think being away from it's made me appreciate uh, uh, what I did love about racing with mm -hmm. the Outlaws. So. Uh, I'm looking forward to doing that. Uh, you know, I think experience in sprint car racing is, I think you can look over the course of history and, and no young guys have really ever come in and just dominated like you see in other sports. Um, experience has a lot to do with uh, sprint car racing and, and the different tracks and the amount of traveling. So uh, I know I'm looking forward to it. I know I'm better prepared than I've ever been to, to going into a season. and. Uh, you know, obviously Cody's in his third or fourth year now, and uh, you know, obviously he's obviously more experienced than he has been. But uh, uh, hopefully, we can help him out with even and more of that, and uh, you know, find success. Yes. Now, when since you've been not been with World of Outlaws, you've been racing up in PA, and Cody's from PA. How do you feel going to PA? Your you know everything, your dynamic and working together. Do you guys think you'll find a lot of success there? Well, I hope. I mean, uh, it's funny because even before I went to Pennsylvania to race, I felt like I was always excited to go to Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. We, I've always ran well at Williams Grove and, and have for a, quite a while, and uh, I feel like obviously I'm even better at it now and have more experience. Mm -hmm. So that you know how the racetracks change from the beginning to the night. Uh, that's the thing about dirt track racing; never the same. No. Doesn't matter if you're on the same racetrack all year long; it's uh, always a different circumstance. So uh, different conditions, uh, different weather, and and different track conditions. So. Um, I was always excited before and uh, even more now because uh, a lot of the ally guys dread going to Williams Grove, mm -hmm. but uh, I'm definitely one. I know Cody's one that uh, uh, always looks forward to going and uh, is excited about rolling in there and, and knowing that it's probably one of the toughest places in the country to go race, but uh, one that I probably have the most confidence going to also. Good. Well, now I'm going to ask you some fun questions. Okay. I tweeted today and asked the fans to ask me some questions to give to you. Um, do you have any racing superstitions or pre-rituals that you do before every race? I, I try not to be superstitious, but I think all of us have superstitious mm -hmm. tendencies. Uh, I'm more of a routine person. I, uh, uh, on race day, I like to do the same things and, and get into certain habits that uh, 
uh, I, I like to keep. So uh, we always try to eat a late lunch because I never eat at the racetrack. So try to eat late and, and uh, just uh, kind of go through certain uh, mindsets and, and patterns that I go through to make sure that I'm ready and, and know that my stuff's ready. But uh, uh, as unsuperstitious as I am, I know which suits I've never won in and, and uh, certain things that uh, you know I keep track of and, and uh, choose to wear those on on, <laughs> on, on a certain nights so uh, I think everybody tries to say ah you know it is what it is but uh, there are certain things you keep track of that mm -hmm. uh, you know are, are, are in your favor or you think that you've had success doing before and sticking with so okay what well, what about what's your favorite track what most track are you looking forward to going this this year um, there's a lot of them, but uh, I always enjoy Eldora. I love Williams Grove, but those are places that we've even mm -hmm. gone to over the last few years. So honestly, the probably the place I'm most looking forward to going back to that I haven't ran in a while is Salina, Oklahoma. Uh, I was really excited. They got an outlaw show a mm -hmm. couple years back and, and talked to my Pennsylvania car owner and letting us go, and, and we almost won the race. And it's a really neat racetrack, and it's uh, 45 minutes from my home. So uh, for it to be that close to home and that need of a racetrack, I'm, I'm excited that they got another race and uh, we'll get to race close to home and, and, and on that need of a racetrack for sure. That's funny you say that because Cody actually said the same answer because oh, okay. they hadn't ran there for a couple oh, years. Okay. So I'm like, this is going to be a good competition going into Salina now. It's a cool <laughs> racetrack. It really is neat. And uh, Oklahoma used to be such a hotbed for sprint car racing. Nice. It's, uh, it's really died down a lot. So uh, it's just neat to get back to the Oklahoma area. Mm -hmm. and, and like I said, it being so close to where I grew up and, and being able to race in front of friends and family and, and what I do is uh, uh, really makes it even that much more special. Okay, um, this is kind of a fun one. What was your first initial reaction when Casey Kane called you and asked you to drive the number nine great clothes? Well, it was shocked, you know, <laughs> uh, excited. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it was uh, unexpected to also, mm -hmm. you know, it was, uh, uh, we hadn't even, spoke and in a while and and uh so it was really a shock to get the phone call from him and um just came together so fast i mean, yeah. really uh i think i asked him three times on the phone the first conversation are, are, are you sure you're not, <laughs> yeah. you're not like thinking about it or anything and, and it was you know the decision was pretty much made at that point so um i wanted to make sure i wasn't reading into something mm -hmm. wrong and and uh you know he just uh, did everything he could to verify no this is the direction he wanted to go and uh, uh was just excited to be that person to get that call Good. Well, I wish you much success this year and good luck and thank you, Darren, for this interview. No problem. Thanks. Okay. You ready? I'm here at Volusia Speedway Park with last night's World of Outlaw feature winner, Terry McCarl. Now, on Friday, you took one lap and pulled in, and last night you went out and won the A main. What happened from Friday to Saturday night? Well, we're just on a pretty tight budget down here. I've only got one car, one engine, so, um, you know, we got qualified uh, a little bit out of the, out of the front. and. Um, you know, really the track was heavy and kind of rough, so it didn't really make a lot of sense for me to, you know, to uh, put an eye on our engine and maybe risk tearing something up. So, uh, yeah, it was the first night on this car, all brand new stuff, and so we were kind of working the bugs out of the brakes and some things like that. So really it was kind of a practice night for us because we're not, you know, running for the whole point tour. And uh, So it was, um, you know, it was unfortunate we had to do that, but lived the race another day and it worked out pretty well. It did. Now, I was watching you throughout the night and it kind of, more towards the beginning of the race, you could enter really, really good in on the cushion, but then you kind of started to almost slow down and had to enter in straight. I saw that the cushion got bigger. How did your car change from the beginning of the night to the end of the night? Well, actually, I was driving up above it early on, like you said, in the race. Um, it was getting around pretty good, but um, this is probably like 10, 11 laps ago. I'm not sure. I broke the Jacob's ladder off, which holds the right oh, side okay. of the car up, the bottom of it. And so it, it got pretty brutal. And the, the cushion is, I wish some of the people would drive around the racetrack after the races. It's hard to see from the grandstands, but sometimes that thing gets like that big, like a huge curve. And, and it was getting that way in a couple spots. And, uh, um, with the, with the jiggers that are broken, it got real violent. So I was better. I just tried to slow down, roll through it, and and make sure I came off the corners as strong as I could. And uh, actually, I caught up to that lap car at the end, and I really was trying not to pass it. Now I heard they didn't wave the white flag. So how did you know you won? Well, because that's that's Darren complaining. He's my friend. So. <laughs> Trying to make an yeah. excuse. They, this guy gives you five to go, and then he gives you a two. He does a two flag thing, and uh, so I knew it was. I knew it was a checker coming out. And then I seen the checker. We're in heavy traffic, like I said, and uh, like I said, I was trying not to pass that guy because of the car. I didn't want to slide him and hit the cushion and make a mistake. So, uh, you know, it worked out really good for us. And, and Darren won the night before. He's getting kind of greedy already. <laughs> yeah, can't let him win both no. nights. Got to hold him up. Now, what are your plans for the rest of the year? I'm gonna try to run the Outlaws. Um, until Knoxville starts, I'm gonna miss a week or two uh, for a family vacation. Carson, my son, just graduated from high school and that's a senior trip, so we'll miss Tulare, I think, maybe a few more, and uh, run with the Outlaws as much as I can until Knoxville starts, and then we'll run there weekly. Okay, sounds good. Well, congratulations, Terry, and have a good rest of the weekend. Thanks a lot. Thanks.
Now I know you're a fun guy, but I heard something really funny this morning. I heard you planted a kiss on Johnny Gibson last night after you won the feature. Well, anyone who knows me knows when I win, I, I get really excited and I'm very happy and uh, someone's gonna get kissed one way or another. And Johnny, unfortunately for him, was the only one around and I think he kind of liked it. <laughs> yeah, well I'm in the t-shirt trailer and all of a sudden he's like interviewing you and then he completely stops and I'm like, I wonder what's going on. And then I heard this morning that you had planted a big old smooch on his lips, yeah, that's he, great. Yeah, he had a loss for words there for a little bit. I, I don't think that's happened to him before, but um, uh, yeah, that's just something I do. I get really excited. When I'm not excited about winning, then that's probably the time I'm gonna quit. But uh, Johnny and I are good friends, but not that good of friends. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you again, Terry McCraw, and good luck the rest of the weekend at Volusia. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Okay, you're good. I'm here with Danny Lasowski at Volusia Speedway Park. Danny, how's your season been going so far this year? So far, we've had a, a real tough year down here so far at the Florida Speed Week. So, you know, usually we come down here, we run pretty strong, but for whatever reason, we just haven't hit on yet, but we're not giving up. That's good, that's good. Now, do you are you in this ride full-time this year, or what are your plans for the rest of the season? Well, I think they have uh, 25 to 30 races scheduled, then I'll be in my own 33 car, as well as Mark Burgess 360. Uh, with all that comes out with no rainouts, we'll be running about 103 races. Sounds good. Now, are you going to be doing a lot of the World of Outlaw races, or? Yeah, so we, on our schedule, I think there's about 48 of them we get to do. So I'm excited about that. You know, we want to be back on it full time, but as you well know how everything's going, uh, we've oh, got to yeah. keep plugging away. So what's your next race on the schedule? I'm racing at uh, Yuma, Arizona, ASCS National Event, uh, the first and second, then I'm going to Las Vegas and Tucson. Wonderful. Well, good luck the rest of the weekend, Danny. I Thank appreciate you. it. Thank you very much. Thanks. Just that a little quick. Yeah. <laughs> Steve Kinzer at Volusia Speedway Park. Now you had a rough night last night. How do you look going into the, tonight's event? Well, at least we was pretty fast last night. Uh, got up and got into the cushion and uh, uh, I got the front end off the ground and I, I think we broke a Jacob's ladder straps and the car started warming around and, and uh, took us out of the race. Not only did I took myself out, but I took Donnie out with me. So uh, it was sort of a rough night, but uh, we were running good. Now you're looking forward to the rest of the season and going to the rest of the tracks? Well, I, I do enjoy racing, so uh, <laughs> I've been in a long time uh, and always look forward to getting racing. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. <laughs> I need some gel. You ready? Yeah. Okay. I'm here with Jason Leffler at Volusia Speedway Park. Now this is your first year with a Wing 410 Sprint car, and I must say I've been very impressed. How are you liking the adjustment from non-Wing and asphalt to Wing 410 Sprint cars? I'm loving it. Um, you know, it's it's something. That obviously, there's things that I, I've never felt before in a race car <laughs> this whole week. But with all that power and downforce, and uh, coming down here to Florida, the competition is just unreal. And, and we knew we were going to come down here and take our licks, but it was an experience that we couldn't pass up and I got to thank Tom Book and the whole 13 team for uh, working hard and um, it's been a really good experience so we're just going to keep learning. Now I watched you during hot laps and you were extremely well and you did well qualifying and then you kind of looked like you were learning a lot once you got into traffic. How was that an adjustment for you? Yeah, it's a, it's an incredible adjustment. Just You earn a whole new respect for all these guys, how they deal with the dirty air and traffic and everything and you know I can go out there by myself and turn some pretty good laps but when I get in the race that's when the, that's when the whole learning process comes in. So um, every night it just I get more and more comfortable and um, just gets better and better. But uh, yeah, I mean it's quite an adjustment. <laughs> well, I must say I'm extremely impressed. I've been around racing a long time, and for you just to jump in like that and go out there and turn those fast laps has been really impressive. But good luck the rest of the weekend, Jason, and thank you. Uh, thank you.
here with Chris Dolak of the World of Outlaws. Now you got a new sponsor this year with the World of Outlaws, STP. How's that been working out for you guys so far? STP has been great. They've been great partners to work with and we're really looking forward to uh, expanding everything that they're doing. Uh, they're excited to be on site at all of our events. They're excited to meet with our fans, uh, interact with the fans, and uh, it, that's what they're really all about is, is getting out, reaching out, and, uh, and uh, making as many connections as they can with all of our fans across the country. Now you have a couple new tracks added to the schedule this year. Are you guys looking forward to having a bigger schedule? Oh, everybody loves having the bigger mm -hmm. schedule. Uh, the drivers love it. I think the crews like it. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes, maybe not, but for the most part, most of the guys love it. Uh, we always like going to the new tracks because uh, you get a chance to see some fans in some places that maybe you haven't seen before. Uh, the crowds are always great every time we go somewhere for the first time or go back to somewhere where we haven't been for the for a while. So that's always really exciting, and uh, you know we always love playing in front of a full house. So um, that's a it's, it's always cool to see a, a new place, a new venue. Well, sounds good. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Thanks. Quick and painful. <laughs>you know, we're just trying to find a balance that we need on the race car. Uh, you know, it's only been two nights with the new tires, so, uh, you know, we're getting better, but we haven't got to where we want to be yet. Now, how long has it been since you ran on Hoosiers? Uh, last time the outlaw, well, no, I take that back. I ran a, when I ran the 3 okay, stuff yep. last year, uh, we ran on the Hoosier tire. Same, same narrow tire, but a lot harder. Okay. Well, good luck the rest of the weekend, Paul, and good luck with your new ride. Thank you. Thank you.
you know, I think we've all got something to prove. We want to go out and, and uh, run well and win races. And, and so far, uh, you know, that was our goals, and, and we've been been right there. So, uh, just uh, hopefully, we can keep it up the rest of the year. Now, last night, I heard the white flag wasn't waved. Did you think you won the feature last night? No, I knew I didn't win. <laughs> uh, I saw the checkered for sure. Uh, just uh, if I saw the white, you know, I think we would at least been able to try to to, to pull a slider on Terry. I don't know if we could have done it or not, but. Uh, uh, shouldn't have waited, you know, it's my own fault. Just shouldn't have hesitated uh, when I had a shot at it and uh, thought we had a few more laps. But uh, all in all, from 11th to 2nd, great run, and the uh, car was really good. I know we definitely had probably the best car the last five laps and uh, just came one spot short. Well, good luck the rest of the weekend, and we'll see you in Vegas. All right, sounds good. Thanks. Thanks.